Welcome back to the Impact Success Podcast. This is Aaron Zapata, your host. It has been a minute since I've been here, but I am back. Now, of course, if you are binging the podcast episodes and you just found it recently, you would not have noticed that there was a large gap in between. That's because things have been busy here at Impact Properties. Things have been busy with the market. Things have been changing over the last couple of months. And I'm now recording this episode here halfway through 2023. In fact, I'm going to say that I was wrong. That's right. I was wrong about my prediction. You see, I thought that with the rising interest rates, that property values would go down. But in fact, it's had the opposite effect. And it's not that the interest rates have had the opposite effect because the common knowledge is that for every 1% increase in the interest rate charged to a mortgage borrower, the same buying power drops by 10%. So on a million dollar loan, if you have a 5% interest rate and that rate goes up to 6%, the loan amount has to drop to $900,000 to have the approximately same payment. So for every 1% increase, you have a 10% decrease in buying power, which in general theory would mean that buyers can buy less because they're being charged more. So why are properties going up in value? Well, that's a very simple answer. Supply and demand is out of whack. Even though interest rates are up, buyers are still buying. There are well-qualified buyers out there and they are buying what few houses come on the market. So yes, there are very few houses that are coming on the market because of a number of reasons. But the primary reason that we hear all the time from our sellers, our would-be sellers, is that if uh, they're deciding to stay instead of sell, it's because of the amazing low interest rate that they currently have on their mortgage. And so our prediction was that as rates go up, that prices would come down. But I can tell you right now what I did not account for in that equation was the fact that we would have fewer and fewer sellers because of the amazing rates that were handed out during the midst of the lockdowns. And in all of 2020, 2021, all of those rates were amazingly low. And so if you own a home, you know what I'm talking about. You probably refinanced. And well, at my mortgage company, Crosswalk Mortgage, I did determine that pretty much all of the refinances would be you know, sucked forward into those few years from the next two to three years, which, which has truly happened. I, I said every the, all the business coming two, three, four, five years from now is being you know, pulled forward into these few years. What I did not account for in that equation on the real estate side was that those people then wanted to stick in those mortgages and they're not going to sell. So on Saturday, this last week, I went to a client's house and they wanted to buy a house in their neighborhood. And it was just a couple blocks over, same floor plan, except it was fully remodeled. And because of the interest rate dilemma, I pulled out my pen and paper, I pulled out my mortgage calculator, and I worked with them through the process of determining what it would cost them an additional monthly payment to go from the current payment they have to the new house payment that they would be getting. So it was, I'll give you some numbers here since you don't know who they are, you don't know where this was, and I can still protect their privacy, but we were gonna sell their house for 1.1 million based on the condition and upgrade to the house that they were buying for 1.2 million. They were gonna walk away with $400,000 in equity and apply that to the new loan and to the new home. So their mortgage pay, their mortgage balance would only go up in theory by $100,000. But that $100,000 plus the additional current interest rate would increase their payment monthly by almost 100%. That's right, it would nearly double what they're paying for now when you add the property taxes and the new mortgage with the higher rate together. And they determined, of course, that that was just not possible. So therein lies the unaccounted for dilemma that we did not see happening. It's the situation where even though buyers and sellers, even though sellers want to become buyers, 
and upgrade their home or even downsize their home due to the drastic gap between the rate that they currently have and the rate that they're being asked to pay now, that big gap creates a huge payment difference and it is often too much to overcome. And so what do most sellers do? They simply stay put, just like mine are. We're not making the offer. We're not listing their house. We're not moving them into the next house. They're staying put. And he's also gonna go ask for a raise. Because ultimately at the end of the day, in order to afford these higher prices on an ongoing basis, uh, income levels have to increase as well. So this year, 2023, is gonna have a very, very low number of sales compared to our history. In fact, in Orange County, where I'm based, the number of pending sales, properties going into escrow in the month of May is the lowest number on record in a very long time for a May. That means that realtors, and this show is geared towards you guys, realtors, is you are suffering. You do not have as many sales as you are hoping for and probably were planning on. And that is largely in part because of the changing dynamics. We have lost an entire portion an entire base of clients by those that have decided to stay in their houses as opposed to moving. So is that a wise move? Is that is that something that a seller and a buyer, a seller who wants to buy uh, should be com concerned about? Well, absolutely they should be concerned. But at the same time, let's talk about the the philosophy and, and kind of the general dynamics again of supply and demand. If they choose to move up and, and take on that bigger payment, they are going to have to make the, first of all, they have to be able to make that payment, which of course we understand. But that home price that they're gonna be able to jump into at that higher price is not a bad idea. So if they can afford to make that jump, then let's encourage them to make that jump, not because we wanna encourage them to go into greater debt or to do something that they can't afford, but simply for the fact that if rates come down at that point, that home that they just bought is gonna go up even more in value because now those buyers that were on the edge that couldn't qualify at these new rates, they're gonna come back in the market and they're gonna push those home prices up. And then at that point, they've got more equity and if rates come down, they can refinance. So it's not a bad idea if you can stomach the, the payment and if you can make the payment on the new house. It is a bad idea, of course, if you overstretch and over leverage. It is a bad idea, perhaps, if you're sitting on the sidelines and you don't want to buy a house right now because rates are so high. But again, common knowledge, common thoughts, the reality is, is that if rates come down, more buyers come back in the market and the prices continue to go up. So the only way in which we can foresee a housing uh, price correction adjustment in a, in a quick fashion would be not because of the, not because of the interest rates, but because of something completely outside of real estate. Perhaps we do enter into a recession and all of a sudden a lot of people need to sell and are forced to sell. Job losses, job relocations, perhaps something happens in your state and, and you and every other person that identifies with your worldview decides to sell. And perhaps that's a huge number of people. And that all of a sudden brings inventory up. All of a sudden you have a lot of competition. You have more sellers than buyers. And perhaps you live in a unique market where that's possible. Maybe there is a national event or something international where it causes people to fear. But again, when people are afraid, they don't typically move. They, they typically hunger down. And so low rates isn't gonna solve that. Um, only peace and the ability to kind of predict the future is gonna allow people to move forward. So I really don't see a solution. And I don't think we can talk to our clients about a solution or how long these things will last because we just don't know what the future holds. But we should be able to talk to our clients intelligently about those things about supply and demand, about economics, about the inventory, about your specific market. We should be able to do that. And so study the numbers, know the scripts, understand how money flow works in our economy. 
watch videos on YouTube about how the Fed rate works and how, how that affects and trickles down to mortgage rates. Take a look at foreclosure inventory and, and let people know that it's, it's at an all-time low. There's very few foreclosures. People tend to sell their equity homes to, to, to cash in on the equity before they allow themselves to go on foreclosure. So those are the things to think about as we enter into this second half of this year. I do not anticipate inventory climbing. I do not anticipate interest rates coming down. I anticipate really a status quo from where we are now, which means everybody, we do have less sales coming. So if you're gonna get more sales, if you're gonna get more buyers and sellers, you gotta become more consistent and aggressive is the wrong word, but you have to become better skilled at being persuasive in your words and your language. So if you go on a listing presentation and you're competing with somebody else that you win, because it's a zero sum game. You win, somebody else loses, somebody gets the listing, the other person gets nothing. There's no parting, you know, there's no prize for second place. So get better at your presentation, hone your skills, get better at your scripts, increase your uh, touch and feel of your marketing, figure out how to do online advertising, figure out how to do pay-per-click, figure out how to analyze your spend on your marketing budgets so that you are only spending money where you know you're getting a return. You can't just say, hey, here's my budget and I'm gonna try everything and hope that something works. You gotta know. And with today's day and age of technology, everything is trackable, everything's measurable. And so you should be able to find that out. And so as we head into the second half of this year, let me encourage you, find somebody, some group, some company that's gonna challenge you, equip you and train you so that you can become the best realtor in your market. Right now is the time to grow. In 2008, I left a job that had salary in the real estate industry. It's very similar to the dynamics going on now, but it wasn't because that was the true housing collapse, mortgage meltdown, but it was very similar. People were afraid there was less inventory for a little while. I had to go out and, and improve my skills. I had to improve my marketing. And I had to work my tail off. I had to work this job as a first job and my side hustle. I had to work at it as a second part-time job. I was putting in a lot of hours making sure that I was talking to more people. And that's what it takes right now. You need to get out and do the work. Why? Because this market is perfect for agents that want to work hard. In fact, I do believe that agents that want to retire, are retiring in this market. I've talked to them. I've tried to recruit agents to come work for Impact Properties and I have uh, got on the phone with them and literally been told, you know, I'm too tired for this again. I've been through it before. I think it's time for me to retire. And so there are agents getting out right now that can afford to retire, that have rentals, that have whatever they have to retire, they can do it and they are doing it because it's a tough market which leaves room for agents that want to grow and agents that are smart, agents that are hungry, agents that are humble, agents that want to get out there and make their mark on the world. So if that's you, align yourself with somebody who wants to encourage you and challenge you to do that. And over at my impactsuccessacademy.com, you can check out different videos that we have. We also have coaches available for you that want to grow. And if you are in Southern California or if you're in Franklin, Tennessee, we have offices that we hire agents that want to grow, want to do great. And then also if you're a loan officer right now and you are in a position where your company is pulled back and you have a real estate license in California and you have the NMLS license, let me encourage you to reach out to me because we also have openings there at our mortgage company. So thank you so much for listening to this quick, short episode today. Let me encourage you, stay strong, stay positive, and go to work. Put your head down. Don't look up until you have achieved the success you're looking for. And with that, I wanna thank you for being here. I hope to see you next time. God bless. We'll talk to you soon.